All righty, and I'm back with part two. So we were talking about how um, plants get deficient in calcium and how it's one of the most um, necessary minerals as it helps transport other nutrients into the plant as well and how we can get calcium, extra calcium into our plants fairly quickly when needed. And using eggshells is a great way to do that. Um, just collect your eggshells um, as you use them in a container. I don't have very many left right now as, as they're mostly used up, um, but I have a few that I have been hoarding um, since whenever I used the last ones up. And so um, these guys first go into the oven on low, so about between 180 and 200. Um, you don't really have to worry about burning them as it doesn't hurt anything, but um, it smells terrible, so keeping them at a low temperature to dry them out really well works a lot better. You can also just put them out in the sun to dry. Um, I have read some research that cooking them until they're brown actually helps the um, calcium be more available when you do this next process that I'm going to show you. Um, but I haven't seen any like evidence, you know, clear evidence of that. But um, there's been a fair amount of experimenting that has said if you cook them for a while longer, it actually helps break down the calcium a bit more. So um, don't worry about over baking them if you choose to do that. And then after they're all cooked and cooled and good, we just want to, I'm gonna raise this up just a bit here. You just wanna break them up. And um, you can do use whatever you have. You can break them up with your hands. You can break them up with a rolling pin um, in a bag. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it. The easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is with a coffee grinder, which, for whatever reason, I haven't used my little tiny coffee grinder that I use for all of these potions in a while. And um, for whatever reason, I can't find it today. So I have gone back the old fashioned way. But basically, as fine as you can get them is ideal. And if you put them in a coffee grinder, you can just powder them. Like, I mean, it just. It just powders them lickety split. It's amazing. Um, a little mini blender works well too if you have enough. You just have to have enough for it to. And so when we're grinding this up, what we're doing is we're increasing the surface area. Um, by making the particles smaller and smaller. And what this does is give the vinegar, which we're going to add in in just a minute, a easier time of breaking down all of the calcium. And um, it happens a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. All right, I will return in just a moment. All righty, so usually I like to get mine powdered completely powdered, but this is about as good as I can get today. Um, we'll have to, I'll have to find my um, coffee grinder, but the most important thing is I just don't have enough eggshells accumulated up enough today. But I noticed the deficiency on my plants and wanted to show you guys how I go about doing that. Um, and then I will grind some more eggshells in my own leisure and, <laughs> and prepare them. So imagine this is completely powdered. Um, you can still do it this way, so if you don't have a coffee grinder, if you can't get it all the way ground up, don't worry, just get it as fine as you can um, without being, you know, insanely, insanely tired. Um, and, <laughs> and go from there. It's just going to break down. There's going to be more calcium available. Sorry about that, scoot in a chair. Um, more calcium available to the plants the finer that you get it. So, um, calcium, like I... I not calcium, um, eggshells. Like I said in part one, if you didn't see that, there will be a link to that in the description box below. But like I said in part one, eggshells are made of about 95%, 94 to 95% calcium carbonate. And um, this is not, calcium carbonate is not in a water soluble form, which it has to be in um, for a plant to absorb it. And I talked a little bit in the other video, or quite a bit, I guess, about how calcium goes from inorganic to organic forms. And I simplified it a whole, whole lot. It wasn't a detailed um, 
description of that, but just to give an idea of what's happening. And so in this form, the calcium carbonate form, which is what eggshells are, the plants cannot absorb it. It is not water soluble. And so our goal is to get this into some sort of a substance that our plants can actually uptake. Now in nature, there are bacteria in the soil and microbes that do that for us. They take the calcium carbonate and they break it apart and the um, carbon evaporates off and the um, calcium is left to be absorbed by the plant. But what we're gonna do to speed up that process, since I don't just have handy little containers of microbes to dump into eggshells, <laughs> not that it would work that way anyways, but um, since we don't have that available, what can we do to help it break down faster into a form that is absorbable by our plants, which are needing it? And one of the ways we can do that is by using vinegar, just plain Jane, oops. Yeah, I'm not getting this, I'm way too close. Here we go, just plain Jane um, distilled white vinegar. Um, vinegar is a weak form of acidic acid and um, that reacts with the eggshell in a similar way that the bacteria do and um, it produces a water soluble compound that the plants can then absorb. Um, it's not quite broken down to its basic, just pure calcium level. It's um, more turned into calcium acetate, um, but calcium acetate is much more absorbable by plants than calcium carbonate. So um, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. It also does break some of it down completely. So there'll be some, um, calcium that's in a more inorganic form once we get done with this, but the majority of it will still be in an acetate format. Um, one of the advantages of having the eggshells in this type of a state where part of it is completely powdered and then some of them are slightly larger molecules is that it almost, you can almost create kind of a time release type fertilizer. So some of the really fine particles are going to get instantly, um, dissolved in the vinegar that we're going to add and they will be immediately available to the plant whereas some of the larger um, pieces will still need to break down over time and when you're doing it in the soil if you're doing a foliar spray disregard all of this <laughs> it doesn't help you at all but if you're doing this in the soil um, it can actually be advantageous to have some different particle sizes so that it slowly breaks down um, over time and releases more and more for your plants. So um, let's go ahead and add, we just generally wanna add about one to one. This is about a tablespoon and a half of, of crushed eggshells. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of vinegar. This is just, again, regular white distilled vinegar. Acetic acid is what we're wanting from the vinegar, but um, this is a very safe form to get it in. I have a kitty talking to me. And we'll see if you can see the bubbles. So the bubbles are the carbon. So in the in the calcium carbonate mixture in the eggshells, that combination. So we talked in the other video for those of you if you haven't seen it. I'm just going to give this a gentle little stir here to make sure it's all getting in good contact with the vinegar. Um, the, in the other video, I talked about how the calcium um, molecules are positively charged, and so they attract other um, negatively charged carbon-based um, molecules such as carbonite. And so um, the calcium molecule is positively charged, and like a magnet, it attracts the carbonate, and so we get calcium carbonate. And what the vinegar is doing is separating, the acidic acid in it is separating those two again um, to put it into a more absorbable form for the plants. Now this is actually, if we were going to try to absorb it in our body, it would kind of be going the wrong direction possibly for human uh, consumption. But for plants, uh, we want it in a more broken down or in organic form if possible for them to um, absorb it. 
So the fizzing bubbles, as you can see here, it looks like soda pop, basically. It's just the uh, carbon dioxide rising to the surface and evaporating off, and the vinegar turns to water. So the there's obviously water in, in distilled vinegar already, um, but the acidic acid reacting with the calcium carbonate causes it to change, and what's left behind is going to be a mixture of water and mostly, anyways, um, a calcium salt called calcium acetate and so um, the vinegar reacting with the carbon um, or the carbonate just breaks that bond or if you want to think of it like a magnet you know um, it just kind of breaks that and so this is just gonna fizz for a while and I'm just gonna leave it here until it's completely completely done fizzing and then what we're going to do is pH test it. And um, you, just to show how it completely neutralizes and breaks down um, the acid so you don't have to worry about burning your plants um, or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to let this go ahead and fizz for a bit more. And then I'll come, oh, I'll just say quickly here, if you want to make a foliar spray, which this is a fantastic way to do it, um, taking eggshells, grinding them into a powder, um, putting them with vinegar, equal parts of vinegar, letting them um, set and react and get all done with that. And then using that diluted as a foliar spray is an amazing way to get calcium into your plants quickly. Um, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do it um, with this because I didn't have my coffee grinder, I'm gonna do this as a soil treatment, which was my plan all along anyways. Um, but if they don't perk up pretty soon, I may do another one as a foliar treatment um, usually I do, would do that more in the summer, but um, I, I may go ahead and do it if they have any problem. But doing this as a foliar spray is a fantastic um, thing to do as well. Alrighty, we're going to let this fizzle for a little bit and then we'll be back and pH test it. Alrighty, I just wanted to show a little peek. It's not done fizzing yet. But it kind of goes in spurts. It looked like it was completely done and it wasn't fizzing at all. And then you give it a quick little stir and you get a whole nother pile of bubbles, especially when there's some that are really fine eggshell particles and some that are really um, large. It's gonna take a little while for it to work and dissolve. So just be patient. You can leave it overnight. That's great. Um, and I dipped a pH strip just to show its level, which is about a four or a five right now. And then we'll test it again later and see what we have going on after a while. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, the, um, the acetate in general is the calcium acetate, which is the form of calcium that's gonna be the most available once this reaction is done for the plants, is just generally um, easier to absorb and more readily available to plants um, without needing the microbes in the soil to break it down. And um, it's particularly available, which I mentioned right before I went away for this last break, it's particularly available foliarly, so through their leaves, um, as a spray. And you may have seen other um, sprays that you can buy, um, places that, that advertise being foliar sprays for calcium or magnesium. Um, those are two pretty common ones, as well as uh, some other micronutrients that they often add in with those. Um, but it is really, really um, a good one for foliar spray if you would like to do that and I have found plants respond very very well um, to foliar sprays of calcium in particular and magnesium both and I've had some pretty um, amazing recoveries over the years uh, with both of them so it's it's um, definitely something to keep in mind um, all right I will let this continue to fizzle and we'll be back to check on it in a while. Alrighty, so it's been about an hour and we've talked about how the um, vinegar in combination with the predominantly calcium carbonate eggshells are creating a reaction that's similar to what the bacteria would naturally do in the soil. And they're breaking down the calcium and making it um, more bioavailable for the plants to be able to absorb. Um, and so this has been sitting for about an hour. I'm going to leave it overnight, but just to be tidy, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the video right now. It's going to get way too long and have to be three or four parts if I show all of the details of making everything. So we'll have to save that for another time. But for today, 
I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like about an hour later. There's no bubbling going on or no nothing. I want to just do a quick little pH strip test so that you can see that the vinegar has in fact been mostly neutralized. It's not usually super alkaline and it will likely be more alkaline in the morning. Um, if this was powdered eggshell, it would be a bit more alkaline right now because it would have broken down a fair amount more. Gotta get this in the light for just a second to look here. But we look in between a 5.5 and a 6 um, on this pH scale, which is great. This goes up to 7.5 but this is plenty, um, it's not too acidic for using with your plants. We'll be diluting this anyways. What I'm gonna do, because I'm in a hurry um, and just not feeling really well and able to do things the way I normally do, all I'm gonna do with this is let it sit overnight, then I'm gonna mix it up with some extra water and then some magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts, and I'm gonna just water my plants with this, um, the, the two that I showed that were deficient there. In the first part, I am just going to water them with this mixture, which is a lot more bioavailable now than it would have been if I just put eggshells um, on the plants. So let's see, what else do we need to cover? I think that will be it for today. There is so much amazing, interesting um, things about these minerals and how the plants absorbs them and biomineralization, which is the chemical acceleration via the microbial activity that happens in the soil to break down um, this particular um, mineral and, and lots of other minerals. It's a very similar process for, for many other minerals as well. Um, previously, scientists thought that plants actually took the um, inorganic minerals up into them and then inside of the plant these minerals um, bonded with other elements and created an organic form that could be absorbable to um, plant or people and animals etc they thought that that happened all inside of the plant but uh, as more research happened which hopefully always will uh, they found out that this actually happens in the soil not in the plant itself and now that we know that there is some great things we can do to help make some of the calcium more available. Um, because calcium is positively charged, it can, um, it can kind of compete with some other nutrients that are also positively charged and kind of um, separates them. Also because it's positively charged, it can carry other nutrients into the plant, which is amazing. There are just so many things um, that calcium can do, but um, sodium and potassium are other positively charged ions that it can compete with. Um, and magnesium is another one as well. So basically, if you apply too much of those other nutrients, like sodium or potassium or magnesium, it inhibits the plant absorbing calcium. And that's a very simplistic um, way to put it, but it just, it, it overtakes the plant and the plant will uptake um, salts and actually bleed out through its roots the um, calcium. So if you are feeding your plant other um, fertilizers that are high in potassium or magnesium, etc., but are low in calcium, and your plant is struggling um, with low calcium levels or at least low available um, absorbable calcium levels in the um, soil, it can become a problem and your fertilization can actually be hurting your plant because you're fertilizing it with the wrong things. You're fertilizing it with something the plant needs, but in order to utilize all those things properly, it needs the calcium in able to, do, uh, to be able to do that. Um, there aren't nearly as many potential harmful pr problems with adding too much calcium. Like you don't have to be super, super worried about that. There are some things that can happen, but it's not a nutrient that is easily overwhelmed, especially because the plants need it for so many um, just basic functions that they perform. And because calcium is a carrier for a lot of the other nutrients, typically we find there are less than ideal levels um, available to the plants, not too much. Now it is possible, but I'm not going to go into all of that for this for this video. So don't worry too much about adding. You know, oh no, is it too much? Um, it's not. It's not a huge um, huge issue. Let's see. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so because of how it functions, it can actually, calcium deficiencies, blah, blah, calcium deficiencies can actually show up in your plants when the soil isn't particularly deficient in calcium. It's just deficient in a form that the plant can absorb it, or else there are other positively charged ions or nutrients as we would consider them that are competing, that are, the, so the ratio basically is just out of sync. And um, you need to have a good, um, amount of calcium in order to balance out some of these other nutrients. So keep that in mind. Um, it, some people do soil tests. That's why I'm bringing it up. Some people do soil tests and say, well, my soil levels, um, my calcium levels in the soil are just fine, so my plants can't be um, deficient. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's available to the plants or that it's in a proportion where the plant can actually absorb it. And I would like really 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 um, like to do a video soon about water and osmosis and nutrient uptake in general on plants and how that functions because it's extremely fascinating and um, plants bleed nutrients out of their roots a lot um, for various and sundry reasons and some of them can be prevented and some of them are definitely caused by us and over fertilization is one of the main causes especially in like house plants and stuff like that um, because over fertilization of certain nutrients causes the, um, the soil to actually leach out other nutrients out of the plant it's almost like putting a slug in salt it just sucks the moisture out of the slug and these other nutrients, if they're in um, levels that are excess, will do the same thing to roots of plants. They will just suck moisture and nutrition out of the plant, which is an interesting concept and really um, has a lot of bearing on how we fertilize. Alrighty, I'm gonna shut up and stop talking about this. This has gone on way, way long enough. So this is gonna sit overnight and going to get mixed with some Epsom salt and um, more water and is going to get mixed into the soil that I am repotting the one with and then the other one's going to get watered with it. And I may go about and uh, later and do a foliar spray as well. But for now, this is where I'm starting with both of the deficient plants and it's a great place to start. Um, and one that works out well a lot of the time. So I hope that's helpful for someone. If you're using eggshells and you're finding that you're not getting great results, try giving them a soak in vinegar and see if that helps a bit. Also, um, adding them to your compost bin, um, places that are really warm and that you know have really good warm, uh, sorry, worm and microbial activity is another really, really good um, option because you need those microbes in order to break down the calcium and make it usable. Just keep in mind that it can take six months to a year for um, crushed eggshells to actually get into a form that is absorbable by your plants. Alrighty, um, one last thing, because a lot of times we think faster is better. So we think, okay, if eggshells take a long time to break down, then um, yeah, faster is better. So more easily absorbed is always better, but that's actually not the case. We do want, if there's an obvious deficiency like in the plants I showed, um, we do want to give them a quick boost of calcium for sure. But having an extended release, so having like a mixture of calcium acetate, which is what we're primarily winding up with here, and then the calcium carbonate, which then takes a little bit longer, is kind of a natural um, sustained release sort of a mixture for plants. So having some of the eggshells broken down and some of them not is a great thing. Having Adding some extra calcium carbonate if you're using it in a fertilizer or a lime type of form or gypsum rather type of format, um, putting, you know, putting some of that in with a mixture that's already um, broken down is a great idea because it gives your plant some now and later, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, so there are advantages to just using plain eggshells too and allowing them to break down. So I, I definitely do both and definitely recommend both. It's just a good thing to realize that the nutrients from the eggshells are not instantly going into your plant's roots if you're just using them without an acid buffer or allowing the microbes to break them down. Okay, I hope you are all having a fantastic day. If you'd like to join the Facebook group, there will be a link to that in the description box below as well. If you have any questions, of course, as always, leave them in the comment box. And if I 
have an answer for you, I will be happy to reply. And until next time, happy growing.